Welcome to our Compose Cast, where we discuss productivity, self-hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac, and with me is my co-host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? Doing pretty well, doing pretty well. First episode here, I'm excited. I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Well, I'm going to dive right in. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering who we are, what we're doing with this. I know it is the season of of podcasts now that everyone has been uh, quarantining and self-isolating. So uh, to introduce who we are, uh, we are both in IT and we decided that we wanted to share our experiences and our knowledge and uh, get the word out about different things that excite us and and that uh, really... Uh, are, are happening in the open source ecosystem, uh, in the self-hosting ecosystem, uh, and as well as what we are doing in our own careers and what we have learned there. So this is not simply a tech-focused podcast. However, we do use quite a bit of, of tech in our work, uh, both, both you and I, and not just working on it, but, but using it. And uh, I'm excited to talk about how we use that tech, uh, how we use it to be professional, to be productive, to be efficient, to be effective, and hopefully sharing that with other people. Definitely. Definitely. I think, you know, I think it's there to make our lives better. So it's a tool. So if, you know, like anything, if you use it, it's good. You know, it might be good. You might use it. It might be nice. But, you know, if it's out there and you don't use it, and what's, you know, there's no value you're pulling out of that. If you're looking at a tool, you have it installed, but you're not touching it at all. You're not, you're not taking anything away from that. So hopefully with this, we're able to, I guess, show everybody, you know, show and I guess put more content out there about this stuff. Make people aware. In order to have a system work, you have to use the system. Right. Uh, and exactly. I am, I'm hoping by this to, to get that out there. Uh, now this, this show to set expectations for the audience is is planned to be somewhere between the 20 to 45 minute mark uh, we're trying to keep it concise uh, and we're trying to keep it limited to the stuff that one we're we're actually knowledgeable about um, to to share our expertise and and specifically to narrow in on several different topics uh, those as you heard in the intro being productivity uh, traditionally self-hosted services career professionalism and innovative technology so we hope to uh, over the course of this this podcast however long it may live uh, cover those in depth and and bring you the very best that we we have about that before we jump into that do we want to introduce ourselves yeah andrew where do you what, what, what tell me a little bit about yourself here where, where are you working right now what kind of it are you doing um yeah, so what's so, what's a day-to-day look like for you i guess so for me i have been for the past three years now a Linux systems analyst, um, systems administrator, uh, mainly working on patching a legacy data center. Um, and it's it's been fun. I've been using a whole bunch of technology to accomplish that and, and learning how to operate in a more corporate environment. Uh, so that's been that's been very eye-opening for me. Um, but uh, going going back, Jack and I, uh, we we met back in uh, OSU days. Yeah, um, we met sophomore, we met sophomore year yeah. about sophomore five year. years ago, six years yeah. ago, sophomore yeah. year. Yeah, working with you, uh, working in the open source club uh, at open, at at the Ohio State University. We both uh, learned a lot there, and and it it showcased our passion for open source. And I think that was the best use of our time at that point. After that, uh, I went to work uh, at the place I'm currently employed uh, and kept in contact uh, with Jack. So Jack, after, after the open source club at the Ohio state university, what did you go on to to do and where are you at now? And how's that going? Yeah. So right now I'm at uh, Duke energy right now doing, actually windows stuff windows uh troubleshooting a lot uh, that's most of it yeah i don't know it's it's every day is something else every day is interesting you know it's a new problem every day which i actually really enjoy uh yeah graduated what a year ago i've been at my job current job for about a year now um 
June 3rd actually was the one year mark on that. So kind of exciting, but, uh, you know, outside of work, it's a lot of, uh, Ruby on rails stuff and a lot of open source stuff. So definitely excited to get this off the ground here and get this podcast going as well. So do you want to jump right into product? What we're doing right now, what we're building. Yeah, Jack, why don't you go ahead and cover what we are currently working on together, you and I. All right, so we have our Compose out there right now. Um, basically, it's a personal productivity suite is what we call it. How would you describe it? It's a suite of tools that's deployed. We have a it's a one-click deploy to get all these applications, all these open source applications installed. So uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I know we actually finally got our front end or back end talking to one another. So we have our, basically it's a one-click deploy to get all these services up and running, which I'm pretty excited about. So um, yeah, I mean, you sign in to one application and then you deploy your instance and just like that, you're you're ready to go. Yeah, so it's, it's nice. We're enjoying it. Do you want to talk about the community a little bit? Uh, I'm going to leave that up to you if you want to roll right in there. All right, definitely. So we're open source right now. We're on GitLab. Uh, gitlab.com slash compositional enterprises. That's where all of our projects are, all of our open source projects are. Uh, we have a form coming soon here, which we're pretty excited about. And uh, actually what we're kind of working on now is a lot of documentation. Um, and with that is, so you're getting a little bit more than the standard documentation. You're getting essentially how to use these tools and how to how to take something away from them, essentially. How to use them in a productive manner and how to use them in a way that's not Oh, I signed into it and, you know, it sat there for two months or whatever. It's it's actually you sitting down and using them in a way that's okay for you to use. With that, do we want to hop into community news here and some updates with uh, some of our products that we support? Absolutely. Uh, and it wouldn't be a podcast if there weren't a news section uh, to, to, to some extent. So for sure, for sure. Uh, to, to keep ourselves up to date, uh, what I would like to do with this is make sure that we cover developments and happenings in the upstream projects that Jack and I are working with. Um, So this episode, we're going to be covering a release of Nextcloud uh, to kind of for ourselves to make sure that we're up to date uh, on, on what's going on and to make sure that you, the audience has a good understanding of, of what's currently being put out there. So, the news item this week is that Nextcloud 19 was released. Uh, this was actually released very close uh, within within days of us recording this, and there were several notable points to cover, um, along with just a general uh, observation about the Nextcloud development in general. So, the the first bullet that I read from their release announcement, which is linked in the show notes is that they have new security authentication and session features. Um, This is very important as it's bringing us up to par with the more corporate or popular type ecosystems um, with passwordless authentication. Uh, If you are looking to beef up your security, one of the most important things you can do is two-factor, obviously, which Nextcloud does already provide. Uh, however, recently they implemented WebAuthn, which is able to accommodate both hardware keys as well as biometrics. So they are continuing to expand their repertoire of ways to secure your system uh, based on tried and true methodologies. Uh, a couple of interesting other things as well. So. Uh, there, there was just a slew of session features that they implemented. Just to rattle them off, there was an optional automatic logout that they put in there, uh, password reuse limitations, automatic account locking in response to failed login att- attempts, as well as password expiration features. So they are really dialing into, frankly, what Active Directory or LDAP has been able to do for decades. Uh, but they are implementing it in a way that they are comfortable with and that they are are hoping is going to be easier for the end user to consume or the end, end administrator. Um, and I think we're going to be using that phrase a lot, the end administrator. So I, I wanted to, to make sure we're, we're talking about the same thing here. When I self-host a service, I, in essence, once it's spun up, am, am the administrator, right? I'm 
in charge of setting it up and and giving permissions to accounts and setting limitations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, with what Jack and I are doing for the Our Compose project, uh, we are trying to alleviate all of the underlying patching and updating uh, and backing, backing up and, and restoration out of the the end administrator's hands. What they should be more concerned about is the business problems that they're facing. Who should have right. access to what information? Uh, they're they're worried about the the cost of of doing business, the retention dates, compliance, stuff like that. I I want to make sure that we're able to provide that solution without them having to also worry about patching backing up and those right. types of in infrastructure accommodations that that are going to be underlying regardless of what system you're using but let's let's really take you know the technology of of containers and open source self-hosting to the next level where we don't necessarily have to have the end administrator responsible for that as well so that they can focus on doing their job doing it right doing it well yeah, it's kind of taking away that IT component, like you said. I really like that you said, uh, what, no patching and no installing or upgrade, you know, no installation, no upgrade. You kind of just click the deploy and everything's kind of taken care of and up to date for you. So you can, I like how you said, you can worry about the business problems. So Absolutely. That's a dream anyways. In. That is that is definitely the dream. So I'd be more than happy to, to get into that later. So I kinda... had one quick thing. Do you have any hardware? Do you have any hardware keys? By chance, Ooh. I I had some buddies that were gonna pick some. Uh, what is it, the YubiKey up? And they were like, "Do you want in on it?" And I was like, I, "I don't have any right now, but I, I, you know, I've seen them out there. I don't know what. Uh, right now, I, uh, I'm on the fence with them. I feel like I have my two factor authentication, which I'm fine with. I don't. I mean, it would if I had one of those YubiKeys, it'd probably just sit inside my computer anyway. So. YubiKeys are great in a corporate setting just because they don't require you to have a two-factor on a personal device. Right. The same with a, a biological thing. They don't necessarily make the business responsible for the software that's on your personal device. Uh, because in, in that case, then it's their responsibility to secure your personal device and make sure that that doesn't get exposed or hacked or that's just another another endpoint. Absolutely. Um, yeah, moving forward here, yeah. Well, and and interesting here too, there is a news item about deck when it comes to Nextcloud. So they integrated it into their calendar feature. Nextcloud is very interesting in that it as a standalone attempts to present an entire productivity suite of its own. And I think it does a really good job. Uh, one of their tools is Deck, and Deck is their Kanban board-like feature where you have to-dos and you have priorities and different ways to, to track work. And what they have done recently is integrate it into Calendar, which is something I've been doing a lot, actually, with our product, uh, Canboard, where I am syncing that calendar via web dev down to my phone so I have an up-to-date uh, listing of what's due that day or even that hour. And it's been incredibly helpful, and I'm glad to see that Nextcloud's deck integration has done that as well. It's definitely a step in the right direction, and it's definitely something that you're going to need if in order to be productive. I mean, who doesn't live by their calendar to one extent or exactly, another? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I so, do the same thing. So, yeah, so, I mean... If I have an appointment, if I have anything, I you know got my hair done today. Guess where it was? It was on my calendar. So um, I'm glad to see that they're integrating that there. Uh, improvement fixes, performance improvement fixes uh, out the wazoo. Uh, very happy to see that rolling in, um, as well as some account tweaks there. Um, once again, if you want to go to the release announcement, we have it linked in the show notes. Rcompose.com will take you right there, give you a rundown of what we're doing, as well as link you over to the podcast where you can download these episodes and more. So, on to what we're actually doing with our Compose, what that setup looks like, what we're providing, and how how we're making it better. So, Jack, if we want to 
uh, to, to take a look at some R Compose development. What's been happening recently? Definitely. So we have uh, two applications out there right now, uh, is what I'd say. We have our uh, portal application. We have our command center application. Uh, basically, our portal application is what I describe as what goes on every instance. It's very simple right now, is what I'd say. It links essentially to all your services. Basically, when your instance spins up, you hit your home page, you hit portal, and portal is going to say, where do you want to go? It's going to take you to Kanban, Nextcloud, where where else here? Bedwarden. We have what? I think we have 11 services that we offer right Currently, now. Currently, yes, 11 services. 10 or 11, yeah. Um, right now, it's deployed on every instance. I think I touched on that already. Um, we offer full backups and migrations. You're staying up to date with the latest versions of all the software. Uh, all the applications, I should say. And then you're also being backed up on uh, a schedule. Luckily, we've been able to minimize that, but we're still backing up uh, on a schedule uh, automatically thanks to Portal. So, Jack, that was a that was a Definitely, recent yeah that was a, yeah. a recent implementation, um, and I'm just so glad to have that. Um, we're we're using our own stuff. We're dog fooding it, and uh, I've just I've I've been happier and happier with how this is coming along. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about that. So backup is included. So, yeah, I mean, what better feature than that? And, <laughs> than that? and restores. We don't just back it up for you. We <laughs> we'll also, restore it. We'll restore it if something goes wrong. We're not hey, just going to hand for you free. a tar yeah, file. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Here's, sure. here's your tar ball. <laughs> go, go um, definitely. So, yeah, actually, that's a good point, though. I mean, you're not locked in. No, Essentially, we'll, to- we'll toss a tar ball at you if you want it. We'll, we'll point you right at it if you need it. Um. But yeah, portals out there. It's deployed on every instance. It's a nice little way to uh, essentially. It's a portal. It is literally a portal. It's it. You can go wherever you want from there. Absolutely. From portal. It'll take you to any app. It'll take you where you want to go. So so hopping into command center. Command center is your application, and that does all our all the billing. What I would describe as like a billing dashboard. You can update your billing information. Do we want to hop into the uh, integration discussion here? Kind of hop into. Uh, yeah, if you want to go over what the integration discussion is all about, how it ties into documentation, and then we can get into the uh, nitty gritty. Definitely. So with our integration discussion, uh, I think the plans are essentially to go over one service per week and kind of do a deep dive into each service. Um, kind of okay. with that, we'll provide all the resources essentially. So with that, what, what I'm mostly talking about is documentation. Um, so in the podcast, we're going to kind of discover, or we're kind of going to, go over a topic, but essentially you'll be able to go into our documentation and find almost exactly what we're talking about. It's the time for Jack and me to discuss the the documentation as we want to see it. What you're right. actually getting with this, this podcast is an inner look at what we're putting together as far as documentation goes. And we all know documentation is, is supposed to be, you know, living, the, the term living document comes to mind. What we want to make sure to have is a a constantly reviewed, updated, and discussed in depth version of what we put out uh, in yeah. in order to make sure that we know we're doing everything right. We can get feedback um, from the larger community as to how we're doing on all of this, or or if we are if we have a very big blind spot that we are not accessing yet. So uh, we wanted to make sure to to put these discussions out into the open, so that we can uh, we can we can feel it out. And sometimes it's going to take uh, several different discussions. Uh, and and really, that's only around one aspect of a service. So this week is Nextcloud. Uh, we are discussing simply the overview of it. What what that entails what we think that needs to be in the documentation, what doesn't, and what we need to to introduce Nextcloud with. Now, we have plenty of other uh, chapters, uh, per se, in the Nextcloud book. We have initial configuration. We have deployment configuration, uh, everyday usage, advanced customization, and more. So, currently... Uh, for this episode, we will simply be going over the overview. I think the difference between us and ups, you know, if you go to the upstream documentation, nextcloud.com, we'll be talking a lot more on the implementation of how these tools are kind of used. Like, why would you want to have cloud storage? Or wh- why would you want to store your files on a server somewhere? 
um, a little bit more of the practical usage for it, um, more or less. What I mean, absolutely. Correct, and what would and you say on the, that? the yeah. specific application, the specific application to how we are integrating this and how you would integrate this into your day to day life. Um, and I am hoping that we can provide a, a specific niche of value where I think we're going to be referring to the upstream documentation a whole lot. In Absolutely. Fact, Absolutely. Because there are uh, really good documentation and the applications we choose to present are ones that are well supported, that have a good community around it, that have a, a solid base of documentation. Uh, so what? Should we jump into it here? Do you want to kind of give an xCloud overview, uh, kind of sure. dive into that a little bit? Sure. So I did a write-up beforehand uh, about what I think we need to cover here. And for an overview, what I threw together was that NextCloud is the one-stop shop for a cloud replacement. What does it provide to its clients? File storage, collaborative editing, task tracking, calendar synchronization, bookmarking, document sharing, ebook reading, audio playing, and video viewing. All, right, all these things and more. Uh, with NextCloud, almost anything is possible. It simply depends on what usage you want to take advantage of and how much storage you are willing to account for. So truthfully with this, on this whole list you just kind of described out, I'll tell you what, two things catch my eye uh, just as kind of an end user. Uh, file storage, I know for sure, public file storage, I'm always, you know, I have all these kinds of audio books and stuff I want to share with people. I'll send links off, uh, Nextcloud links off to people. It's just easy. It's, it's easy for me to do. I put a link up. I say, share a link. I send it off to, you know, 10 people or whatever. I say, Hey, look at this. Uh, and it's a link to an audio book or a link to whatever. Um, and then the other thing that stands out is calendar synchronization that I mm. use. So I love their calendar. Uh, they're, I think it's just Nextcloud Calendar, honestly, is what it's yeah. called, and yep. I, I use it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I was a, I was big on um, what is it, Google Calendar, but I kind of hopped off my. I'm getting away from the Google products, is what I'll say. So, and this was honestly a great replacement for that. So, those are the two features that stick out to me. I don't know what you like to use. I know you're big on bookmarking. I, I haven't, I haven't, di- I haven't, you know, looked into it much, but I know it's a feature that's out there that I kind of want to dive into. Absolutely. Well, I have a I have a couple of use cases for it myself. Uh, one of them is holding and sharing my photo albums. Okay. Uh, so yeah. one of the things that I will be doing tomorrow as part of my Thursday is heading out to one of the local trails around here, around Columbus. And I've really found that there are scenes uh, that really just catch my eye, and I want to make sure to to capture them and and have them to look back on. It's it's super peaceful to be able to look back on something throughout the rest of the week and and the weekend and and just kind of relive that. I I find it brings a real uh, peace, Absolutely. and yeah. Uh, yeah. I I love actually sharing those with with other people as well. I think social media has taken over a lot of that. Um, it's a lot different. I'd call it a lot different though. I'm sharing, you know, what I'm. I, as an example here, the other day I sent my uh, family an audio book, you know, 300 megs of, you know, I can't share that on social media. That's not, no. th- there's like an upload limit. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I'm capped by, there's... Uh, I'm capped by someone else. And so with this, you know, it's essentially quote unquote mine is what I'd say. I'd and you say just say, is. hey, check this out. And it's, you know, the audio book I sent over to him. So. So I absolutely and and being able to share these photos not only share them as files, uh, but Nextcloud has a built-in photo album viewer that they can oh, scroll awesome. through. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I'm when I'm sharing a link, what they get is a a Click. slideshow yeah, of yeah, my yeah. walk, and I, I just think that's it's really cool. It it makes it super easy to kind of ingest that that media. Also, it's even easy to share it out through social media at that point right that's it's a, something it's, you need to it's yeah. a link to the it's a link to all of it essentially yeah, it's a link exactly. to an album is what i'd say yeah so definitely so i definitely appreciate that uh and as well like you touched on the bookmarks so i sync all of my bookmarks to all of my browsers on all of my devices it just makes it very easy to 
to keep those all in sync, especially where I, I see something at work that I want to follow up on personally. And I did not before that have a easy way to, to sync bookmarks. And it was, it was frustrating. What, you know, what are you supposed to email yourself a link? Like, I mean, right. right are we right. in like 1998 right now or what? <laughs> so, uh, also the other thing it allowed me to do is recently, Jack, and I know you've, you've been hearing about this for the past couple of weeks, but built myself a new computer. Uh, it's a little Definitely. small form factor PC, uh, sitting right on my desk here. It's, it's beautiful. I have in it the same hard drive that I had from my previous desktop. Uh, however, once that got put in there, but well, before it got put in there, it was completely wiped. Uh, I DD dev zero onto the thing and there was nothing left on it. All right. So I, I erased everything, right? What are some of the considerations that you have to take into account when you are building a new PC? One of those is going to be your your browser, your browser customization, your uh, your your browser setup, and your browser's bookmarks. Well, with Nextcloud, I don't I didn't have to worry about that, right? I was able simply to wipe out and re-image a hard drive, uh, in this case an SSD, and bring it up, and boom, all of my bookmarks Ooh. were just there. They're just there waiting for me. So that was. That was incredible, and uh, I was just really won over. Once I experienced that, there's no way I'm ever going to have local bookmarks ever again. That's all. That's a nice feature. I didn't even think about that. I completely remember you uh, reimaging your PC, but I, I, I didn't even think of you know it's stuff that I guess if it would have been local, you kind of would have been stuck, like essentially recreating one. I know in my bookmarks, I keep all kinds of like tidbits of information that I want to look back on. So. That's definitely a huge feature to have there. Absolutely. How about that? That's awesome. So I, I think something that I don't have in this, this documentation overview uh, is that not only is, is next slide good in those, those specific situations, and I think it's much more than just file storage. It's a, it syncs your life, right? And, and that's obviously what Google and Apple try to do as well. But up till now, we really haven't had a great service to do that. Right. In the open source right. world. Uh, and I think Nextcloud really fills that niche very well. Every week I look at Nextcloud and they're adding a new feature. Um, so I think I, I also want to mention something about their, their community there because that that is just a great, it's open source exactly as you would consider open source. You know, tons of different people contributing to different things. Do you have anything else, any other points to add with Nextcloud here? The only thing that I would expand on is the the last sentence in that overview as it's written right now which is that it simply depends on what usage you want to take advantage of and i think we cover that pretty well yeah but but it's also right, how, right. how much storing you're willing to account for right how much storage you're willing to account for now we do provide unlimited capacity or growing capacity with storage utilization uh, so so the actual size of and and the the ratio of of what the compensation is for that size kind of follows with as you're growing um but it does tend to accumulate quickly it's not non-negligible right it's a it's a non-negligible right. amount of of storage um however i think if you want to keep something anywhere right if you think about the properties of media if you think about hard drives, how they can get corrupted, SSDs can can wear out. Uh, I, I think right now you either have tape or the cloud for long-term storage. Those those are really your two options. Maybe Blu-rays. That, that's the only other competitor that I've seen in recent times. Uh, but realistically, if you want something cheap, easy, and efficient, it's going to be either the cloud or tape, and, and tape is far from easy. Uh, so I would to say, steal, yeah, to yes, at least on that one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, so I would say that, uh, if you're going to store stuff like that anywhere, I mean the, the best place to, to keep it up where, you know, it's still going to be around is, is somewhere where the hard drive underneath you is not volatile. And that is going to be the cloud. However, there is the 
economics of storing all of those somewhere else. So if, if I put them on a hard drive and put that hard drive in the back closet, it would cost me the cost of the hard drive plus the risk that that hard drive becomes corrupted or, you know, wears out. Or, you know, what if something happens, yeah. you know, what if something Fire, happens to your house? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, also where the backups come in, right? I'm not saying I don't keep local backups as well, uh, but what I would want to do, and, and, and the ability to not only have it resilient to to entropy, but also available on demand, that's, that's something that's only until recently been a pipe dream. And I think that's where NextCloud is really able to shine. Uh, and it does make it, fairly transparent on the back end. Um, and I think the end admin would be someone who would be concerned about that. And as far as a, a group setting, whether that's a, a corporate setting or a small business setting or group setting, something like that, the, the end admin would be concerned about that in order to be judicial about uh, how much they, they really want to compensate for that ability to to have the the uh, protection against entropy and the the utilization but i think it's it gives it to them in a better package than any other medium can it, the one thing you brought up that i you know it's tape or cloud and realistically i mean i didn't think about it like that until you just said it honestly but it uh, that's honestly that's your those are essentially your options yes i mean you're not you're not going to go ssd or a spinning disc if you want something to last forever you're just you're just not because it's like you said i mean you might have external uh hard drives or whatever but how do you know that spinning disc is gonna you're gonna have to to spin it back up right and then right. you're not gonna you're not gonna know if you have bit rod you, until you spin it back up and then right, you're hosed right. if you have more than you absolutely know, your your parity amount i think that is that is a huge takeaway from this uh, and hopefully some of that diatribe we can use to flesh out the overview of next cloud uh, make it approachable i'd love to have it approachable and and exciting because I, I obviously i'm super excited about this Definitely. stuff i use Definitely. this stuff every day every day absolutely you know it, Shoot, those features that we have, I think we have them linked in the show notes here. I, I'll tell you what, take a look at those features, mm. and I, I, you know, I think yeah, some you have to be able to find one of them that you're going to use. Honestly, the, I mean, that's that. that's where I'm at with it. I, you know, let's move on here. Let's uh, let's get to the last section here. We do have one more section. We have the grab bag, and this grab bag is is a section about an assortment of topics uh, of of interesting topics that, that we find or, or, or that we found interesting. This is some of the stuff that we find out there it, on the internet, right? The, literally interesting stuff we find. I mean, it's stuff that you don't see every day. It's projects out there that... Yeah, so um, this could be, this could be you know, tech uh, like Bitcoin or IPFS. Uh, this could be methodologies, different ways to, to, perf to work in an agile manner. Uh, books that we've we've gone over. If if we've yeah, read something yeah. interesting, I'm not gonna break down the Odyssey, uh, uh, but I might go not, into not the, in scope, not in scope, not, not in scope. scope no, but yeah, I might go yeah. into the four hour work week. No, I might I might Definitely. break out a little Tim Ferriss there, uh, or, or or talking about Tim Ferriss, different other personalities. Um, so there are plenty of people around the sphere of things. Uh, CGP Gray. Uh, he runs the Cortex podcast, um, has has some very good episodes, uh, and and there's a ton of external people who, like us, are interested in in these types of things, making our work better. You know, how does how has knowledge worked? How has the information age transformed our day to day? Uh, the, the the way that we're we're coping with this new reality. And then lastly, uh, personal experiences like like we, we started out with. Both Jack and I have professional jobs in systems administration. There are uh, challenges in that field that are unique to, to that field. There's stuff that's going on in that field, specifically the, the rate of change. We're, we're hoping to, to bring some of that personal experience in as well. Uh, Jack and I settled on a uh, very hot topic. 
for our first episode here that we wanted to cover. And, and obviously this has been something that uh, people have been talking about nonstop since April. But we wanted to go over how working from home works. So, Jack, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I like it. I'm doing well. Uh, I feel like I perform the same as or better than at at home than I do at work. Um, you're not supposed to say that though. That's that's not what you're supposed to say. That's what metal management wants wants to hear. You know, I, I think the one thing that I would say is probably difficult from anyone's perspective is, you know, how do you know who's getting work done and who isn't? And mm. I feel like so at our organization, we're pretty good about tracking all the work we do. We have a ticketing system out there. We have a Kanban board that we have out there. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to tell who is and who isn't working, but. Honestly, I'm doing really well. I feel like the big thing for me is the commute. It's great. I got a whole 30 seconds down to my chair. and You're talking to a guy with no kids here. Yeah. I know you and I don't have kids, so I don't have three or you know one to three people running around screaming, hey, can you feed me? Hey, I want to play. So I, I can perform very well. I have no problem. When it's time to work, I have my work laptop open. When it's time to not work, I shut it. I turn it off. It's very easy for me to separate work and... I guess not play time, but break time. And I, I think you and I have talked about it. Even it's after work's over, you know, you separate it with a physical activity. You set, you mm. break it up somehow. You, you have to break it up lately. I've been going at lunch. So I think the big part of it is physical exercise. I don't know if you want to touch on that a little bit. Absolutely. Import- I mean, this, that's very that important. Is. Very important. It's usually my lunch break is, is actually taking a little siesta, a 20, 20, 30 minute downtime. Uh, and then I'm back up and at it. I think uh, what's been the most changing for me is when this first went into effect from when the when my company set everyone home to, to work from home. It was about three or four weeks in and I had still had not gotten back in the habit after having worked out about six weeks ago, I'd say. Uh, I started getting back in that habit and it is far and away the best thing I could have done. Uh, it it broke up the day for me. It reset my mentality and it lowered my stress. I mean, if, if you want bullet points, there they are. It It's a way where you are physically getting somewhere else and actually physically you, you, you're, you're performing something with your body. I perform with my mind all day long. That's knowledge work, right? I can't knowledge myself into, you know, push-ups. I can't knowledge myself into pull-ups. That's something I got to go outside and and actually do. When I didn't have that, it's almost as if the day blurred together and suddenly it was absolutely 1030. Right. And, and I was still in the work mentality. Uh, I think it's also huge when it comes to stress relief. Um, Obviously as, as guys, we're a little bit more prone to, to that, uh, to, to have that kickstart ourselves. But for anyone, it is very important to to get outside and and go through something where where you're you're pushing yourself you're stressing your body without stress your body cannot improve itself it, it can't even maintain itself uh, so so stressing your body is is a way to kind of <laughs> uh, paradoxically enough is a way to to de-stress yourself stressing your body is a way to de-stress yourself and i i have never seen that to be more true from when I compare before when I was not uh, going out to exercise and after when I was. I, I love the physical exercise. I'll go out for 40 minutes every day. Run, I'll run, uh, and then I'll do push-ups or something after. I haven't been to the gym in probably a week, two weeks now. But uh, just getting outside and walking around, running around, it's definitely, you know, take clears my mental space is what I'd say. Do we wanna, what, what, what do you think about physical spaces and the separation of all the, uh, what do you think about having a workspace, having a uh, personal space? Do you separate? I do to an extent, uh, and, and I can go into that. Uh, I think it's interesting to juxtapose it with something that I heard on the Cortex podcast, which was in the beginning of the lockdown, they were discussing about different attire, and, and how to clothe yourself differently based on what you're doing. And they found that not necessarily effective. 
Yeah. And that really, yeah, that was that was kind of their takeaway, and I can I can see that. Um, I could see where wearing you know shorts versus slacks when you're chilling versus when you're working is not necessarily going to be the biggest mental differentiator. Right. Right. Exactly. To contrast that with physical spaces, I think physical spaces do make a difference. And I'd be interested in hearing your opinion on, on how you think they, they do and to what extent they would. So I'll tell you what, I have my desk right up against my bed, but so I use my desk for work and I use my desk for uh, personal stuff at home here. I treat it differently based on, I don't know. I don't know how to say this. I, based on, I'm pretty good about changing my mental space, okay. essentially. Um, so, uh, I'll, I will take a few breaks during the day. Uh, so I usually wake up, work for a couple hours or whatever, four or five hours. Uh, I go to lunch, but on my lunch, I'll do a physical activity there. So with that, I'm cleared for the afternoon at five, uh, five thirty, six. Whenever I get off work, whenever kind of like the, everything kind of trickles to an end here, and everything kind of closes. I have a, I have a good break point. I will shut my work laptop down. I will put it away. Uh, they can still text me. They can still call me. I open my personal laptop. Uh, I'll go downstairs and I'll make dinner. And usually dinner is that the differentiating factor for me. Yeah. And then so I eat dinner. I'll come back up. I'll work. I'll do some personal stuff on my laptop here. Um, and then actually I'll go back downstairs before I go to bed. And when I go downstairs – uh, it's usually about half an hour. I'll just play. Uh, lately, I've been doing Guitar Hero. I'll watch TV or something, and it's quote unquote a wind down, is what I'd say. Okay. So I wind down in a different room, and then I come back up, and it's my sleep. So I have the same room for work and personal life, essentially, but I treat it differently based on where I am in the day. If that makes sense, I don't know how. If you, I, I know you have a different physical space for each thing here do you want to kind of touch on what you do here oh man uh sure yeah why not right so where i'm at right now is what i would consider my battle station are you Uh, standing right now that's what i want to know yes yes absolutely uh i have a standing i have a standing desk with a bar stool in case i need to sit down and uh i think it works just fine actually one of my coworkers at work brought in a seat from his uh, mechanic shop Okay. Uh, his his kind of side hustle, so he has that as his standing desk stool. So nice. Um, I think it, it it is a really good idea. It works. I I do that. Um, I am I'm here. I got all three of my monitors. And lately, I when I've been at work work, uh, I've been downstairs in the comfiest of IKEA chairs. It's just the most comfortable to to put your legs up and just uh, have have your laptop on your lap. I think uh, I am really in the mental state of, of doing that. I mean, it, it works on two levels because it provides me with a perfect background. I have all my bookshelves uh, down there, and it's it's just great, and it looks incredibly professional. And uh, I, I, I don't think I have a, a better place to spend the majority of the day than down there. Uh, sometimes I'll even get out on the back porch and do some work there if it's a nice afternoon or a nice morning to to do that i have talking about the backyard uh that's where i am typically doing body weight exercises as it stands currently Uh, so i'm i'm running around uh, out there doing pull-ups push-ups squats burpees you name it if we go from cgp gray's Lockdown Productivity Spaceship U video that he put out recently, which yeah, we do have a lot uh, in our uh, notes. And I think we covered most of what's in that video uh, just differently. And my bedroom is actually a, a separate room, separate room, uh, which yeah. is is just incredibly nice. One of the things I've, I've fallen prey to more than once is is laying down and not being able to sleep and then pulling up some video on my phone you know, going through someone streaming, you know, the Clue board game, I think is what I watched recently. Uh, but but multi-purposing uh, is, some, is not something to fall victim to, uh, especially when you're talking about where you're, you're supposed to sleep. I mean, right. that, that leads to a whole bunch of not good stuff. Um, so if I, could, if I could caution against anything, any, any one thing, ooh, I'd say it's a toss-up. It's probably a toss-up between work out and keep your sleep space separate. Your sleep space? Yeah. 
two my two main takeaways from fair this enough, fair enough fair enough our our workout makes absolutely work out and separate your sleeping space from everything else i don't care i don't care okay. if it is only your bed your butt better not be touching that bed while you're working or while you're right, watching a video right. absolutely it, absolutely that, keep the sanctity of the bed sacred that's where you sleep yeah, right that, that's where you sleep I think that's what we uh, we wanted to cover. Any last words, Jack? Everything here. I think I don't have anything else to add. All right. So you can find the show notes for this week's episode on ourcompose.com. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of our Composecast. Thank you. Be safe. And we'll see you all in two weeks. Goodbye. Bye, everybody.